what is happening within the Methodist Church now? <laughs> well, the the uh, United Methodist Church has undergone a great deal of conflict uh, for most of its 50 year plus history. Um, and that conflict has escalated to the point where a proposal has been made for the church to have an amicable separation and different expressions of Methodism will emerge from that amicable separation. So that proposal will be voted on at the church's general conference, which because of COVID-19 has been delayed until August of 2022. When the protocol, when this agreement to amicably separate is approved by the general conference, one of the new expressions that emerges will be the Global Methodist Church, which we announced this past Monday. So you are separating. I have great respect for Methodist Church because John Wesley, Charles Wesley, George Whitfield, those are like not just for Methodists, for all Christians. They are great models of faith. Yes. And favorite song is Christ the Lord is raised today by Charles. That's so right. Their hymns are just like so gloriously written and uh, Methodist, Methodism itself is a great Christian tradition when John Wesley and Charles Wesley started it at Oxford University as Holy Club. So it is really sad to see that you are separating uh, but why can't you like, uh, uh, why can't you just stay within United Methodist and continue with your private convictions? Because the conflict result it comes out of um, fundamental disagreements about our uh, understanding and application of Scripture, the authority of Scripture. Uh, and, and the conflict is irreconcilable. I believe the Bible is clear when it proclaims truth and that our, our, our preaching, our teaching, and our practice needs to accord with the truth revealed in God's word. It, it's impossible for a church, I believe, to preach, teach, and practice conflicting truths around its doctrines and ethics and remain as one united body. So do you think that right now in the United Methodist Church, the scripture has no such authority? The, the issue is that there are a significant number of leaders, uh, that is bishops and pastors who are practicing their faith in one way, contrary to the discipline of the United Methodist Church, and are not being held accountable to that discipline. In addition, they have sought to change that discipline to accord with their practice. But at each general conference, which is our legislative body, held every four years, their proposals have not prevailed and yet they continue to act in disobedience and not be held accountable. So that has adversely affected the witness of the United Methodist Church. The conflict has persisted for so long and has become uh, so consuming for the church that it has adversely affected the very mission and witness of the church. So it is our belief that um, because the conflict is irreconcilable and we are no longer united, it does not make sense for us to continue to be in one church body. As you perhaps know, uh, I can tell you know some Methodist history. The Methodist Church in America has gone through various times of separation and then at times reunification of parts of the church. Um, this is one of those times where 
the conflict is tearing the church apart, and there is no way to bridge it. We've tried. Uh, no way to bridge the conflict. And so we believe it is an Abram and Lot moment, Genesis 13, where uh, for the sake of their witnesses, they blessed one another and parted. Likewise, Paul and Barnabas, at the beginning of their second missionary journey, separated for the sake of the ministry, uh, the sake of the witness that they were uh, uh, going about. We believe it's that kind of moment in the United Methodist Church. So taking your analogy, Abraham and Lot, who is Lot here? And who <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I'm not going to go down that road of trying to identify. The thing is that Abram, who was the senior older elder in the, in the story, he acted with humility in that story, trusting God. Uh, and he did not impose his viewpoint, uh, his perspective, his sense of uh, privilege on Lot. We have sought to act in that way in this conflict uh, by saying we're not going to continue to try to uh, engage this conflict in ways that are, are hurtful to others or hurtful to the larger body of Christ. And so therefore, we won't presume upon entitlement or anything like that. We are trusting God in stepping out in faith in the way he is leading us.